Okay, now we're going to look at some postulates for a different type of plane geometry that also is under some study. It's called a projective plane geometry. Um, so in this geometry, we have uh, four basic postulates. Postulate one, there exists at least three non-collinear points. Postulate two, every line contains at least three distinct points. Postulate 3, given any two distinct points, there exists exactly one line containing both points. And postulate 4, given any two distinct lines, their intersection is exactly one point. Now before we go on, let's compare that to affine geometries real fast. There exist at least three nonclinear points, postulate 1. Affine geometry, there exist at least three nonclinear points, same. Postulate 2, for projective, every line contains at least three distinct points, affine every line contains at least two points although it might be possible to have uh, affine plane geometries with three or more so uh, postulate three could be um, true for some uh, postulate two every line contains at least three points uh, for projective plane geometry they have to have at least three per line affine they could have three for each line but we've seen one with only two Still, not too much difference there. Postulate 3, given any two distinct points, there exists exactly one line containing, containing uh, both points. Okay? Two point, in other words, two points determine a line. Affine geometries, given any pair of distinct points, there, gets, there exists exactly one line containing them. Again, two uh, points determine a line. So really the first three postulates are, are pretty much consistent. Um, that you need an extra point in projective plane geometry per line than you have in, in the uh, affine geometry, but they could possibly both have three or more. So, so far so good. The big difference is postulate four. Postulate four says given any two distinct lines, their intersection is exactly one point. So there is no such thing as parallel lines, whereas affine geometries, you always have a line and a point not on it. There's exactly one line containing the point that does not intersect the given line. Whereas in a projective geometry, all pairs of lines must intersect and their intersection must be exactly one point. So it's postulate four in the two, two types of geometries there that's going to be a big difference. So um, again, there are infinite uh, infinitely big geometries that are projected plane geometries, but let's there and there are several different sizes of finite ones. Let's find one of minimal size. What's the least amount that, of points and lines that we need to have? So let's start with postulate one. It says there exist three distinct nonlinear points A, uh, B, and C. So here we have points A, B, and C in our model. Okay, now does that mean there couldn't be more? No, there may, there may, even, uh, may even have to be more, okay? But we know that so far, just postulate one besides itself, just itself alone, says that we have to have three, and they're not all on the same line. Of course, this doesn't mean that there are even any lines have to exist with just postulate one. But postulate two says, now postulate three is next, given any two distinct points, there's exactly one line. So we want to see that there exist lines A, B containing A and B, A is C line containing A and C, and B, C line containing B and C. Uh, I've made these three different colors to help out to tell them apart. But uh, each one um, um, might have other points. In fact, it has to have other points by postulate too. So what was the reason for this? Statement 1 in postulate 3 says there's a unique line containing each of these pairs of points justifying the notation. And statement 1 also, the part about them being non-collinear points, also guarantees that these have to be distinct lines because if, the two, line, if two of these lines were the same, then in fact uh, all those three points would be collinear. Now it could be that we have three points on some lines. In fact, every line contains at least three points. Um, 
by postulate 2, but these three specific points are non-collinear by step 1. Now each of these lines contains a third point. So there's a point D on line AB, a point E on line AC, and a point F on line BC. And these should have line markings on them. Okay, and statement two says every line contains at least three points. I mean, statement two says we have three lines. Postulate two says that once we have each of those lines, it must contain at least three points. So there must be at least a third point. Of course, these points are distinct from uh, any of the other points generated thus far. So A, B, C, D, E, and F are all distinct points. If any two of these were the same, uh, any we, we already said that A, B, and C were distinct, but if any of these were the same as either A, B, or C, or as each other, then we would have two lines intersecting in more than one point, which would violate, uh, violate our, pro, our, our uh, postulate 4. Now, there exists at least one line CD containing C and D, because now that we have these points here, we have to be able to take any two points and connect them up with a line. So there's at least one line containing C and D by statement 4 and postulate 3. Statement 4, of course, was that we have these distinct points C and D, and postulate 3 says given any two distinct points, there's exactly one line. So there's a unique line CD. We can name it CD because it's unique. Okay, but it must, uh, CD, line CD is distinct from the other lines generated thus far. If it were identical with one of the other lines, then you would have um, two distinct lines would intersect in more than one point, violating postulate 4. And it contains a point G distinct from the other points thus far generated, and I need to give a reason for that. Uh, G exists by five and statement five and postulate two. Okay, so there's a point G is on there. Now there's exactly one line containing B and G, which we can call line BG, and I'll put it in orange here. Now what we're going to show is it has to contain that that line must intersect this line here at some other point. It might be at E or it might be something else. That's our next step. Notice that BG does not contain A or C. Okay, so if BG, if this line went to B to G and A, then we would have um, two lines through B and A that are distinct. That's a problem. Same way if it were C. So it has to contain a third point. That third point has to be on line AC, and it does not necessarily have to be point E, but it can't be A or C. If we have only three, po only three points per line, which we will in a middle, minimal model, then it has to be point E. But we could have, say, maybe a, four, a fourth point on this line where this intersected. Now, in a similar manner, we can make another line, AF. No, FG. Let's call it FG. The line FG has to intersect. Remember, what, well, how do I know? Well, all lines have to intersect, right? That's postulate 4. And they intersect in exactly one point. So the line containing F and G 
has to has to intersect this this so the orange and the purple lines have to intersect okay if it intersects at uh, C we have a problem because F then F G C would be a line then F C B is a line also that would be two lines through the same pair of points F and C if it went through uh, E we'd have the same problem because the line, uh, let's see, EGB and EGF would have two points in common, and two points generate a unique line. So it can't go through there. So FG can't go through point C or E, well, or C or whatever, whatever point that line goes through. And if it's three points per line, it's got to be E. So it has to go through A in this case, if there's only three per line. But it has to go through something different than either C or the point where this one intersected. So that leaves us A if there's only three points. However, let's don't go too far. It doesn't have to only be three points per line. Okay, we're, if we go with a minimal model, that there will be three points per line. In fact, we're almost done with our model. Okay. In fact, can you see what's missing? There's got to be a line between F and D here. So there exists a line, let me call it E and F. E and F have to have a line. Well, that line, EF, has to intersect with the blue line here. Well, what are our choices? Well, if it goes through A, then A and E are on two lines. That's no good. Similarly, if it goes through B, B and F are on two lines. That's no good. So the only other choice is D if we only have three points per line. So there is a minimal model. Here's the actual model here. So notice that these points don't have to be in a Euclidean line to make this work. So this, this black circle here, or, or arc, indicates that these three points are connected. E, D, and F, but it does not necessarily mean uh, that they're on a Euclidean line. In fact, none of these are Euclidean lines. Uh, these are in a Euclidean line, A, E, and C, in our, in our, our uh, illustration, but of course that line is only the points A, C, and E in our minimal model. So in our minimal model, we have uh, seven points and seven lines. Uh, the point A B, C, D, E, F, and G are the seven points, and the lines are the blue line, A, B, D, the purple one, A, C, E, the orange one, A, F, G, the green one, B, C, and F, the, the tan one, B, E, G, the darker brown, C, D, and G, and the black one, D, E, F. So this one has seven points and seven lines. This is a seven point seven line projective uh, plane geometry, and this one has a name. It's called Fano's projective geometry, named after you know mathematician Fano. It is the minimal size projective geometry we can have. Now, how could we have generated a larger finite one? At the point where we we drew the line BG, instead of going through point E, it could have gone through another point on the the line AC different from A, E, or C. That would have generated a fourth point on that line and we could have generated a larger model by um, seeing what that would do for us. Okay, and that would generate some more points and lines and things. And so we would end up with more than seven points and more than seven lines. Now it turns out that there's an interesting relationship between projective plane geometries and affine geometries that we may uh, go over at some point in the future in a later video.